Hello and welcome to Quality of Life, the show where we look at the different attributes that can affect one's quality of life. Today we're going to talk about an EAP program or Employee Assistance Program. And today joining us to help us with that is Pamela Krieger from Aurora Healthcare. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you. Um, to get off started with, um, what's your education and background in the EAP arena? My education is I have a master's degree in social work and I have five years of experience working with employee assistance programming. Okay. What is an employee assistance program? So let's just get to the basic definition. Yeah. An employee assistance program is an employee or an employer sponsored benefit um, that allows any employee to access services. Those services are a huge host, a range of different uh, services to really maximize an individual's quality of life. Okay. Why would one need to attend an employee assistance program? Well, there's a couple different components to an employee assistance program. One is uh, the direct counseling services. Uh, through Aurora EAP, individuals can call in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and talk to a master's prepared counselor. Um, the employer themselves um, can access and use services um, by having any type of, if they have a crisis, um, mm -hmm. they can access those services 24 hours a day as well. Um, so employee and employer benefits, there are two separate areas. Okay. Um, the counseling services, again, um, we have in-person and telephonic consultations. Um, when we look at other services, we're looking at those things that we call work-life services. Those are things like, um, as an employee, if you have a child or you have ch school-aged children and you need daycare, EAP can help navigate that. Um, you call the 1-800 number and indicate the times and the location for which you need the child care. And we do a comprehensive search um, okay. and, and help them identify those services. Um, because if an employee doesn't have daycare, they can't come to work. Mm -hmm. um, or if they don't have quality daycare, then they're going to be not focusing on work when they're at work because they're going to be worried about their child. Mm -hmm. um, another feature and component is elder care services. Um, so you have aging parents and you need some um, guidance or assistance on um, homemaking skills. Um, if a parent has increased or need for medical service, um, anything like that, legal, homemaking, a, a whole host and a range of services that we can aid and assist an employee access locally and throughout the United States. Um, so elder care and child care consultations is one piece of our work life service. Um, we also have the benefit of um, adoption services. So if somebody wants to adopt a child um, from where and how much to support services afterwards as well. Um, we also have a legal consultation component to our work-life mm -hmm. service um, so that if any employee or their family member um, has a legal question, uh, anything outside of employment law, that's the only type of law we can't consult on mm -hmm. um, because again, it's an employer-sponsored benefit and we won't help the employee take action against the agency that's sure. providing that service. But anything from traffic accident to um, a consumer issue, um, a will, anything like that, they can call and access those services as well. Okay. In a nutshell, how would it work? I mean, say, mm -hmm. I think there's a couple different components of it, but how does it, yes. let's say in generally, how does it work where an employee is referred to sure. or you know, seeks a service? Uh, employee assistance programming works through um, a 1-800 number. Um, again, that's answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, to schedule an appointment or to access those direct services, you would want to call between 8 and 5 central um, time. Mm -hmm. um, but we have intake specialists that will direct in any individual, whether they need to talk to an assessment counselor um, immediately or um, talk to somebody legally. So it's really accessing the service by calling, okay. calling our 1-800 number. In, this, in the situation of the workplace, mm -hmm. can the employer refer the employee to an employee assistance program? Absolutely. Um, one of the pieces of my job that I get to do is um, I work with about 100 organizations in the Sheboygan County area. 
And so one of the things that I get to do is go and educate not only uh, the employer, so the staff, the supervisors, and the employees about what benefits EAP offers. Um, a lot of times supervisors will encourage employees to seek the service if they um, can tell there's mm -hmm. a work performance problem or issue. Um, and one of the benefits to the employer is that we have what's called a supervisory referral component so that when an employee um, has maybe received verbal um, reprimand, mm -hmm. you know, along the progressive discipline lines, um, maybe a suspension, somewhere along the lines, they're going to maybe make it mandatory to come to EAP. So that is a benefit. Okay. Um, so the supervisor would meet with the employee and indicate it's a requirement that you attend EAP to kind of address the issue. So EAP could be mandatory or voluntary? Absolutely. 7% of our business is the supervisory referral component. And a lot of organizations use that really because they care deeply about mm -hmm. their employees, but also understand that they don't want to violate sort of that uh, personal piece sure. um, and understand the dynamics of what's going on. That's a great, a, a great segue to, to saying that Employee assistance programming is completely confidential. So just as anyone would call and contact their physician, we operate under the same laws. Mm -hmm. um, so that basically the only thing as a supervisory referral that the organization knows about, um, the employee signs a consent form which allows us to tell the employer, yes, they came. And hopefully in the end, what, what the employer is gonna see is that whatever the problem was that was impacting mm -hmm. the employee's work performance would be addressed. Okay, so like with the confidentiality laws, like with HIPAA and seeing the physician, that's bound by that as well. So that Absolutely. way, if I voluntarily go there, it's confidential information. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Or if you mandatorily, you know, through a supervisory sure. referral go, um, the only feedback that is given to the organization is that you were cooperative mm -hmm. and compliant. And if there are further recommendations beyond the scope of EAP, then, then, then they know that. Mm -hmm. But they don't know about the specific situations that you're bringing forth um, because we want it to be a very trusting, um, open, helpful um, environment. Mm -hmm. How long, if an employee is either referenced or voluntarily wants to look at one of the services, how long does the program usually last or does the session last? Great question. So um, employers have the opportunity to um, contract um, with Aurora and so they, Aurora EAP, mm -hmm. and so they can have a three session model or a six session model. So voluntary uh, individuals that come through EAP have three or six sessions per situation. Um, so if in January they call because they're um, stressed about a situation, they can come in potentially and meet with an assessment counselor three to six times. And then later in the year, something else happens, they can come in um, and meet with our assessment counselor three to six times again as well. Um, on a supervisory referral, we require that the individual comes in two times. Mm -hmm so that our assessment counselors can fully gauge and understand the dynamics of what that employee is experiencing. Okay. What's the format of the sessions or the program? Is it just, you know, a, a physician patient or counselor, you know, patient conversation or is there a formal testing or I guess, mm -hmm. how does that all work? Um, so in EAP, we do not do any diagnosing of individuals. Uh, if individuals feel more comfortable doing strictly telephonic mm -hmm. consultations with, an, with you know, um, the assessment counselor, they can do that as well. Um, or it can be face-to-face. -face. Um, Aurora EAP has a location in Plymouth and one in Sheboygan where they meet face-to-face -face with those assessment counselors. So it's really the comfort level of the individual. However, again, if it is a uh, required uh, a supervisory mm -hmm. referral, then we do require face to, two face-to-face -face sessions. And that really is one component of EAP. The other component of EAP is that um, when organizations maybe are struggling with a particular issue, high levels of stress, something's going on within a team or a department, that's uh, one of the things that I get to do is go in and provide training. So I uh, will provide any type of supervisory 
uh, or employee training, ranging from anything from stress to strength. Um, we talk about wellness, overall wellness, looking at the seven components of wellness, and give employees and supervisors very tangible materials to take back and use with their employees. Okay. We touched upon before, you know, how someone can get referred to or voluntarily, you know, go. How are employees or people in general educated on that, that this is what's all available, you know, so they can go someplace? So the, the organization uh, can do a variety of different things. Um, we provide monthly focus of the month um, highlighted topics, mm -hmm. which we have on our website. So that communication is um, distributed to employees however the organization feels it's most appropriate. We also have uh, three times a year we send out a newsletter directly to supervisors. So as a generalized reminder to the supervisor who is in touch with those employees on a day-to-day -day basis. And then three times a year we have employee newsletters where we focus on a particular topic or issue uh, highlight that on our website and then um, provide additional information accordingly. Uh, we do corresponding posters so that people are aware of the, of the topic of the month. Okay. Who can refer me to an employee assistance program and who is usually all involved when this does happen? So, um, in general, we certainly hope that all organizations offer employee assistance programming to their employees. Um, it is a great benefit that allows individuals to focus on work when they're at work mm -hmm. and focus on home when they're at home. And so that's why we highlight the issues that we do so that we know that um, happy people produce quality results. Mm -hmm and can stay focused at work when they're at work and have a good life when they're at home as well so that it's balanced. Um, so it depends on uh, the organization that you work with. So you need to check, as an employee, I would check with your human resource department okay. um, about what employee assistance program service you have that you're eligible for. Did that answer? Yeah, answer yes, question, definitely, right? thank you. Yeah. Um, is it required by law? It is not required by law. For, you know, for an organization to have them offer employee assistance program? It is not, okay. uh, but it is a, a service that allows an employee to access services uh, without any payment. Mm -hmm. So it's an employer sponsored. So the employer pays a per month um, fee for sure. uh, the employee to access that service. Uh, counseling services, uh, again, those work-life services mm -hmm. we connected on earlier, whether it be financial consultation, um, child care, sure. elder care, legal consultation, that kind of thing. Okay. Is the method usually an employee, uh, excuse me, an employer wants to you know, start up an employee assistance program, mm -hmm. how do, I mean, do they go out and just research and you know, talk to agencies like yourselves, or is it the other way where agencies like yourselves talk to employers and approach employers, how does that relationship work? It can happen either way. Um, again, we hope that all organizations offer employee assistance programming to their, um, to their employees. It's a win-win a for the employer and the employee. We oftentimes find that um, having an employee assistance program will reduce health care costs, mm -hmm. um, particularly the mental health um, component or piece of that. So um, through insurance brokers or, um, you know, contacting any um, agency that would provide mm -hmm. the service, absolutely. So that's one nice benefit for an employee is they can go, go to the service, take advantage and help themselves, as well as then helping the employer, you know, ultimately in the workforce. And it's absolutely. a benefit provided by the employer. Yeah, it's a win-win for so everybody. So it's a win-win for everybody. Yes. So it helps the whole man in the workplace. Absolutely. It helps the community as yes, well. Yes, and the community. You know, because the individuals that work in the community live in the community. And mm -hmm. when they are um, happy, healthy, productive individuals, we all win. Yep. Absolutely. The concept of EAP, how long has it been in existence? Is this a fairly new thing, or has it been around for a while? It's not a fairly new thing, but it, it's, a, it's a great question. Aurora EAP has been um, actively involved in the community since 1983. 
Um, and they were originally started years and years ago. Unfortunately, I can't give you a specific sure. year, but um, they were originated um, when individuals were struggling with um, severe, significant alcohol and drug mm -hmm. abuse issues, um, and they were brought into the workforce. They really evolved over time uh, to be a very voluntary uh, program that offers way, way uh, above and beyond service, uh, above and beyond the alcohol and drug abuse. Right. Although it is a primary issue um, that we educate mm -hmm. and highlight, particularly in our community in okay. here in Sheboygan. What types of organizations provide a EAP program like yourselves? Is it a, usually a healthcare provider, or a group, a hospital, or I guess what are the agencies mm -hmm. that provide these services? So as I indicated earlier, I work with about 100 organizations and they range anything from any, you know, employees of 10 mm -hmm. to over 1,800 employees. Um, and they are, can be manufacturing environments, they can be school districts, they can be banking industry, it can be pretty much any organization that really cares about the quality of life that an individual uh, who's working, an employee, um, works for them if, if they want to if they want to provide that that benefit and service so as an individual if i would be looking for counseling i have to be an employee of a organization that has an eap program i couldn't just like say you know i want to come to your facility because i need help on something so i couldn't come on my own absolutely you're correct and so that's why i would encourage employees to ask their human resource department, do we have an EAP? Mm -hmm. um, and understand those very comprehensive or not comprehensive benefits because all EAPs are not the same. And so what they offer are very different. And so I would absolutely direct an employee to connect with their, their human resource mm -hmm. department. Well, you just follow right into my next question. How do employee um, assistant programs differ from one another? Well, the type of service they offer um, ranges. Some uh, employee assistance programs only offer telephonic. Um, Aurora EAP is local, and we have, you know, that face-to-face. -face, mm -hmm. um, we have a, we have locally. Um, we have three assessment counselors that uh, see the, the bulk of the employees within this community uh, that use Aurora mm -hmm. EAP. Um, I work with organ organizations that um, consist of about 20,000 employees. Um, so the face-to-face -face component is mm -hmm. diff can be different. Um, and then the t type of service. So maybe um, not all EAPs offer those work-life services, the free 30-minute consultation with an attorney, the financial assistance, the um, education assistance, that kind of thing. Okay. So it depends. And that's why really your human resource or your benefits um, specialist within your organization will understand that and know, know the benefits that, are, that the employee is eligible for. Okay. Um, to touch briefly, I know you mentioned Aurora has an EAP program mm -hmm. that spon or sponsors one, has one, offers one for employers. Mm -hmm. uh, what types of agencies uh, you know, other than Aurora can, can or do uh, provide that type of a program for employers to go to? Is it like basically any healthcare provider? You know, is it a hospital type thing or, you know, what, yeah. how does that come about? So sometimes uh, other uh, organizations such as insurance organizations mm -hmm. will, um, or a short-term disability, sometimes there are add-ons to uh, a company that accesses insurance benefits for their mm -hmm. employees. Um, they may offer an EAP program. So that, I mean, okay. it, it just depends. Again, um, the quality of what you receive um, and, and the type of benefit you um, offer your employee mm -hmm. uh, depends on, you know, the uh, organization that you're getting sure. the service from. Sure. Well, so. like it says, not everybody's the same as what we had talked about before. Right. It depends on, you know, the EAP provider who actually provides the counseling service. What's mm -hmm. their menu of, you know, services that they want right. to provide? Absolutely. As far as that goes. Yeah. Uh, across the country, or let's say within, you know, let's just say Aurora, you mm -hmm. know, it's nationwide or whichever. Does your EAP cover the whole country, you know, where the services are pretty much the same throughout, or do you have to specifically gear it towards region, you know, of the country? 
So we offer Aurora EAP, we work with a variety, over 300 organizations. Um, some of the organizations have affiliate or um, sister parent companies okay. in other parts of the state of, uh, of the United States. And we do offer and extend those services to those organizations as well. Um, and so we do work with some affiliate mm -hmm. um, sites that understand our practice and our business, how we do things and um, we enter into agreements with them to provide our service. Okay. What's your um, visitation, you know, volumes usually on a yearly basis around? Um, well, when looking at overall utilization, we have national average for an individual coming in to using EAP mm -hmm. is anywhere from four to six percent of the population. Okay. Our average within a EAP, mm -hmm. our Aurora EAP, is, is approximately 5%. So we're right in the middle. Um, and that's our total book of business. And so when we say book of business, we are looking at uh, Green Bay, across to Oshkosh, down to the Illinois border. Mm -hmm. I will say specific to Sheboygan County, I tend to see with the organizations I work with a higher percentage of utilization. Um, I sense that I, I work with a lot of organizations that know their employees rather well and care deeply about their, their mm -hmm. employees. And so I tend to see anywhere from 8 to 9% utilization. Wow. Um, and that's, we, we keep track of that on a one time or an initial use. Sure. So, so yeah, we're very, I, I mean, people are really taking advantage of, employees are taking yep. advantage of that service. That's good. And then of those eight or nine percent that you see, what's mm -hmm. your success rate where a positive impact has been made usually grow? That's a great question. And so individuals that come to EAP, we are able to aid and assist them. Eighty-four percent of those individuals do not require or need a further referral. So uh, EAP is really designed to aid and assist individuals with, um, in, you know, somebody that's experiencing an issue or a problem mm -hmm. that may not be you know, a long-standing issue. Um, and so if, again, we don't diagnose individuals, so if we feel or um, assess that a situation or a person might need more than what EAP mm -hmm. can provide, we will provide that outpatient referral. Um, and that happens anywhere, you know, 14% of the time, a, a, a small percentage. Sure, and, that, and that's a great question or, or a great answer, which comes into my next question is, somebody goes through EAP and the counselor realizes we may need more help here for this individual that we can provide, you can do referrals to other agencies such as, you know, mental health or, you know, physical, you know, Absolutely. cardiac and such. We do. We provide any type of referral that an individual needs as it relates to um, whatever mm -hmm. problem sure. they're experiencing. Um, and so we are aware of the organizations that we work with their insurance so it doesn't have to be aurora insurance sure. so if somebody has a different carrier we are aware of who those preferred providers are and guide those employees appropriately okay because we want them to live the best life that they can and have the least out-of-pocket expense possible absolutely uh, with that so the whole eap program um, have you seen shifts or volumes increased during, let's say, the late, latest um, economic downturn that we had, or you know, natural disasters, or you know, events like that that happen, you know, in our either in our, in our community or in our world, as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see the trends follow that for the usage of utilization of you know EAPs? Yeah, I would say um, the use of EAP has been pretty consistent. Perhaps the issues for which the individuals mm -hmm. come through you know, might fluctuate somewhat. 33% of the individuals we see in EAP um, have a relationship issue of some type, whether it be child and family or a marital relationship. 21% uh, stress, anxiety, and depression. 25% um, do those work-life services, so mm -hmm. the child care, elder care, financial, sure. legal consultation. Um, a slight increase in occupational over time, mm -hmm. um, particular and specific to the Sheboygan County, we do see a higher incidence of substance use, alcohol and or drug abuse um, need for those services. Mm -hmm. um, and we do um, 
track sort of you know the primary issue that individuals struggle with and and why do we do that because we care about what this community is struggling with and we want to make sure that the resources are there and available for the individuals okay as far as the benefit of an EAP program have you done any studies to you know try and measure the cost savings or impact on a business by using these programs, you know, mm -hmm. so they don't lose productivity and well as we keep a healthy workforce, you know, yes. work-related, you know, um, injury incidents such as that. Do you have any mm -hmm. statistics compiled on that? That's, that's a great question. I did bring um, some information that is through our national organization, actually, um, Employee Assistance Professional Association through EPA. Um, companies with employee assistance programs report 68% increase in morale, 62% higher productivity, 59% lower absenteeism rate, 35% reduced, reduced turnovers, and 21% fewer accidents. So when we look at a return on investment, the organizations that I work with, um, on an annual basis, mm -hmm. we do a dollar for dollar. Um, and anywhere they see one dollar invested in Aurora, you know, or mm -hmm. EAP, EAP program, program right. we'll see anywhere from a seven dollar to a twenty-five dollar return. Nice. Along along with that, you know, one has to look at it's not only the benefit of where the employer is, you know, benefiting, increasing profits and such. It's also the home life of the people themselves. I mean, that's where Absolutely. we really need to focus. Is mm -hmm. you know, as our show quality of life, it's. Mm -hmm the whole the whole circle of quality of life not just one aspect of how it all fits together absolutely you know as far as that goes mm -hmm. um, our time is just about up do you have any closing remarks or any other comments or charts you'd like to show our audience i certainly just thank you for highlighting employee assistance programming mm -hmm. i think it is a great benefit um, that oftentimes is underutilized within organizations um, and um, just really your emphasis on quality of life because the reality is is that um, work employment mm -hmm. situations, um, employers impact employees who in general um, make our community what it is. And so um, I thank you for, for that opportunity and certainly any partnerships sure. uh, moving forward, um, we welcome. No, I thank you for joining our show. And one thing, you know, that I think people should remember to realize is if they're not alone, if they need help, there's a place to go, you know, mm -hmm. benefits there, ask for it. Don't be afraid not to say, well, I can do this on my own because there's many times, especially in this day and age, things are so fast, the stress level is so high, you know, you're being pulled in how many different directions. Ask for help because it's there. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Thank Excellent. you. <laughs> so, uh, on behalf of quality of life. Uh, we covered employee assistance program. Pamela, I'd like to thank you for being on the show. And if you have any questions or comments, please visit our website at www.wscssheboygan.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Dave Augustine.